Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI, and this is a patient who has ankle pain. They were born in 1974. They've had a history of old injuries and just chronic pain. They have several findings, multiple findings. I'm not going to mention several of these things. You may see them as I'm going through this, but I'm just going to mention some of the main ones here. So on this midline sagittal T1 weighted sequence, we see one of the first problems right here. This is the sinus tarsi. Normally, this is filled with fat, which should be bright on this T1 sequence. Instead, it's very gray. You see this scalloping, these erosive changes in thesopathic erosions where the sinus tarsi ligaments attach. So this is just really fulminant chronic inflammation with bone erosions of the sinus tarsi. And when we see this, the next thing to think about is the posterior tibial tendon. When you have posterior tibial tendon dysfunction, it can cause abnormal stress on the sinus tarsi ligaments, and this, this can happen. So we're going to look at the posterior tibial tendon. See they have this other dorsal spurs here. We're not going to really go into detail on those. And if we look over here to the posterior tibial tendon, we see the posterior tibial tendon coming down here along the medial side. And from here to here, it's gray. Part of this can be a magic angle phenomenon, but really it's just too gray. And then the angle, if we look on this coming down, it's uh, not coming over here to attach to the navicular bone, and it's just too gray. There's a little area here. This could be a little uh, accessory navicular ossification, or it could be a little old avulsion right there. And I'm going to put up the axial images. These can be very hard because you get magic angle phenomenon here. This can fan out normally and have gray signal on the T1-weighted images. And some people will call a tear. It's not there because this can normally have some increased signal. But this is just too much signal. And again, if you follow that line down, it looks like it's not going towards it. Now here we're on the axial images here. This is the posterior tibial tendon. As a PTT comes down here. We see there's a gray signal deep to it, which is not normal. That's a spring ligament. It looks like it's partially torn or uh, chronically thickened. And this is the posterior tibial tendon coming down to its insertion. And right here at the insertion, this big glob of gray signal is abnormal. It's just too much. If you had just a little bit and it fanned out, it would be fine. But this is too much. And also that spring ligament thickening underneath it is another sign of posterior tibial tendon dysfunction. So this is coming down. We never really see it attached well to the navicular bone. looks like this is the last image where it's really dark and it becomes really gray. So a prominent partial thickness tear of the posterior tibial tendon. I don't see any fluid-filled gap, but uh, definitely a problem. And then when that happens, it gets uh, causes abnormal stress on two things. One, the spring ligament here that's thick, and also the sinus tertiary ligaments here, which are diffusely inflamed. Now, this patient also has some prominence of that middle subtalar joint. You may notice this. looks like it's too prominent. We look on the sagittal images here. If we go medially, here's the middle subtalar joint. And if we keep on going medially, it just, the uh, calcaneus really is prominent. It goes way over here, and it looks like it almost blends with the posterior subtalar joint. So this looks like um, a coalition, a, a talocalcaneal <laughs> coalition. The most common one is a calcaneal navicular coalition right here. Uh, and this is the second most common, a talocalcaneal coalition. And we can see this on the coronal images. If you wonder, look on the coronal images and see, does this look too broad over here? Sometimes it's just incredibly obvious on this. It'll really poke out a lot. This looks like it is too broad. So it's maybe a coalition. And again, this is the sinus tarsi, really just socked in with inflammation. And that posterior tibial tendon tear is right over here. And this patient also had one other finding over here. This is the medial Taylor dome. They had a small osteochondral defect, a shallow OCD. And there was no loosening or displacement. You can see that right here. And that's it. So thank you very much.